Alrighty, we've got ourselves a civilization already established. We got four of them all around what? A river. Big surprise. Water. Water tastes great and it's essential for life. Remember that. Now, we're going to start off with Mesopotamia. Remember that? Middle land in the middle of the river. Start off about circa 3500 BC. That dates up for a little bit of debate, so we'll stick with it until further notice. The civilization in Mesopotamia, current day Iraq, is known as either Sumer or Sumeria. Works out either way, whichever one you like. Now remember something. There is no united Sumerian nation. They are independent little city-states. Kish, Lagos, Ur, all sorts of places like that. It's kind of like saying New York, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia are all independent cities, right? So it's not united. They tend to, some are allied, some fight with each other. We're not going to get into the whole history about the third dynasty of Ur or anything like that. I've already memorized that for you. You'll just go crazy. Save yourself. I've done it for you. Now, it starts around circa 3500 BC. Life is great if you're a Sumerian. At least you're not starving to death. But your religion tends to rotate around human sacrifice. Why is that? Because the gods of Sumeria are very, shall we say, not user-friendly. They demand everything, including the life of its subjects, and maybe even yours. The river's uncontrollable, it floods at random, it'll pull you in, it hasn't changed a whole lot. So you must propitiate the gods with a sacrifice, i.e. maybe you. Life as a Sumerian is grand, or as well as it can be, until 2300 BC. Then our friend Sargon of Akkad shows up. Who is Sargon of Akkad? First thing you should notice, it's singular. That's the United Nation up there, Akkad where the Sumerians are all fighting each other. Ur, Lagash, and all these guys, Kish. Sargon of Akkad has the world's first standing army. It's the United Army. It swoops down and picks off all these Sumerian city-states one by one. Now, Sargon of Akkad, world's first standing army. What happens to him? What happens to everybody? Eventually they're going to die. Sorry to bust your bubble, but it will happen. Now, the truth is to have fun until that day occurs. In 1800 BC, we'll skip up there, we're going to have Babylonia and a guy named Hammurabi. Hammurabi is famous for having a code of laws. Why is a code of law so important? That's how you keep things in order. A code of law is great because if I steal bread, are they going to execute me or cut off my hand? And if somebody else steals bread, is he or she going to get executed or cut off their hand? In other words, it's about fairness, justice and fairness. That's why we hear about this stuff in our Justice Department in varying degrees sometimes. But that's what it's all about. we got to keep things fair. If it's fair, you're going to be loyal, right? If it's not fair, we get revolutions. Hammurabi's code is not something taken lightly. There's eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of thing. There's some severe penalties. But there it is. It's codified. It's fair for everybody. Uh, the bad news is we end up with people called lawyers after that. People who interpret those laws. Life will continue along on its merry little way until 1400 BC. We got more people coming down from further north called Hittites. What's so bad about a Hittite? It's called iron weaponry. You ever talk about soft, buttery bronze and how it can't stand against iron? Well, if you ever punch bronze before, it'll hurt your hand. If you go through it with iron, it'll cut it in half. And sometimes that's where the soft, buttery stuff kind of comes from. They also have a nasty habit of riding chariots. Chariots are great for running people down. I don't care how fast you are. Can you outrun a chariot? Didn't think so. Now, they also have an organized standing army. I wonder where they got that idea from. Oh, yeah. Sargon of Akkad. I'm sure somebody wrote it down somewhere in an alphabet called cuneiform. That's what everybody's using at the time. That's the world's first alphabet. Hittites come and go. They're going to get a big fight with Egypt. We'll talk about Egypt a little bit later on. But after the Hittites, we got somebody even worse showing up. That's right, the Assyrians. Assyrians are a real mystery. They have great libraries at the same time. They don't mind killing everybody who resists. Assyria got started up there in the northern part of Iraq. Once again, we've got ourselves a standing army. Wonder where they got that idea from. Iron weapons. Hmm, you think they might have seen that somewhere, read it someplace before, the whole study of history kind of thing? <laughs> Organized standing army. Combined arms army is what these guys have. We have infantry, we have cavalry, they, go, they even have siege equipment. Because the biggest problem in ancient warfare is trying to besiege a city. I can't climb over the wall because who's on top of the wall? People don't want you there. So what's the way? Can you climb the wall? Sure, you can climb up on a ladder, but they're just going to throw the rock down on you. 
and you get to see them before they do that. Maybe there's a burning oil and all the other stuff. You also have the uh, possibility of maybe starving to death, that kind of thing. So Assyrians get around all this by knocking down the wall. Once they knock down that wall with siege towers and things like this, they pour into the city and then proceed to kill everybody. Now, Assyrians are very good at conquering, but they're not very good at running an empire. Why is this? Because the bigger this thing gets, how many Assyrians do you have? Only have so many. And you got this huge empire that's spread out and people don't like you very much. They try to force people to speak Assyrian and Assyrian only. You have to worship Assyrian gods. Everything you own belongs to the Assyrian king. Not a very good thing around circa 900 BC. And that brings us to our first exact date, 612 BC. If you get an exact date this far back, something big happened. And that something big was the rather rapid destruction of the Assyrian Empire. Because when you are, as my Canadian friends would say, a hose bag to everybody, once the rebellion starts, it's going to snowball. Ironic in a place where it doesn't snow a whole lot, right? 612 BC is the fall of the Assyrian Empire. And what you get after that? You get your typical Middle Eastern problem of a whole bunch of different countries in a very small place. Don't forget to check back for more episodes of History Rescue. In the meantime, if you have a question about history, leave it down in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe.